Hello! I am just across the street from the brilliant Horseshoe Falls. Why am I not looking at the falls? Well, it's because I've come here for one of the rare attractions that I've not done in the region, which would be the Niagara Floral Showcase. Now, it being early May, there's no better time, I figured, to come and actually experience this for the first time, as I'm sure the Floral Showcase will be at its peak. In fact, a lot of these tulips out front are already starting to show some wear and their age, which is crazy considering it is still only the early part of May. Don't really know what to expect as I've never been here before as mentioned. It's unfortunate that uh, I think that we're a couple weeks away from any of the fountains actually working in Niagara Falls as none of the facilities seem to have them running yet, which is fine. You kind of get an impression of what it's about, however. But like I said, no better time to come for a floral showcase than in early May, so let's go inside. So we have two attractions here to check out, which is the Hydrania display, which we're going to, you know, obviously be in the gift shop at some point in the future. Admission required. We have admission. Vis-a-vis -vis the Niagara Parks Pass, Adventure Pass for $100, and it includes this attraction and more. I highly recommend it. I think those turtles are living. If we zoom in, yes indeed, those are living turtles. I'm just chilling there. We also have some goldfish. And we get into the main display. I do have a garden at home, but I don't have any knowledge of these plants and what they're about, other than they look like carnations to me. I'm not going to say anything because I know that some plant lovers will watch this video and I will drive mad by getting things wrong. This is, this is, I thought this was aloe, but it's not. But that's aloe. There's so many different types of aloe. Look at that aloe. It's frightening. It's also very warm in here, just so you know. So if you're going to the power station, which is located right next door, and you're doing this, you're going to need a winter jacket and a t-shirt in the course of an hour. There's also no bugs in here, which is nice. And there's a snake plant, but where is this? Where is the snake? Sensitive plant. Mimosa. I think this is one of those ones that, yes, so if you touch it, it actually moves, which is very cool. You can see here. Know this plant is alive. Mm -hmm. 
They love aloe and cactuses here, clearly. So it appears these two greenhouses are for display purposes of all of the work that they've produced over the years. It's clearly these plants exist year round. As you can see the base for this one. It's quite something else there. I have never seen some of these plants before in my life. I have a version of this at home, however. Very colorful. On this side, in the middle of this greenhouse area, you have larger greenhouses that are for industrial use. I think that the entire Niagara Parks floral works maybe come from this facility, or at least a lot of it is bred in this facility. Correct me if I'm wrong. This second room is much smaller. Or at least as far as the display is concerned than the first, as you can see. More of a colorful display, if you will. We are here at the right time, though. Everything is in full bloom. And that is it for the floral showcase. We are off to our second attraction here, which will be the Minachar Village. Minachar Village. Minachar. These umbrellas are actually pretty impressive. Miniature houses. A couple are missing. Looks like it's been, it's had better days to be honest. It looks like an abandoned estate, if you will. Or it's in a state. I'm sorry. We have a rather unusual looking, this is kind of Blair Witch territory if you ask if you ask me. Complete with these houses in the trees. Not really sure what the concept behind this is, but For those of you fans of my miniature village vlogs, you definitely would love this section. Unfortunately, there's a piece of Ziploc in the water there. And also unfortunate, I don't believe this train is actually working today. It's certainly not, I haven't seen it go around. Very, very reminiscent, however. These are authentic Muskoka-style cottage buildings, including that A-frame in the background, which everybody used to love back in the 80s. It even has a village here, a nice outpost. used to be able to go across, unfortunately you can't, but it does look like the work is going to be done soon. 
essentially, I believe most of these businesses, as there's a lot going on in the background and trying to get them polished up for the upcoming season, are preparing for the Memorial Day slash May 2-4 weekend as their official launch to the season. Thus, you see a lot of construction and improvements going on in the background on various attractions that we visited on these vlogs, which is fine. We will be coming back, not necessarily to all these attractions, but sort of get an idea of what the falls looks like once it's fully set up for business. All right, guys, well, that's all that we have to show you from the Floral Showcase. It's an $8 experience if you're gonna do it on your own um, for a, a pay one price admission. But as I mentioned, definitely take advantage of the pass. Just do it as part of the overall Niagara Parks package. Uh, and you won't really feel like you were left short as far as that admission is concerned, because it's a pretty fast experience. Uh, pretty decent. Uh, definitely needs some work in areas, however, which means to me, uh, yeah, it, it's not exactly one of the better attractions to check out here in the area. But for now, thank you for joining me. The Floral Showcase here at Niagara Parks.